it's pretty basic, but I mean, how many different ways do you need to, to prove that Islam is of the devil? Exactly, yeah. It's Catholic, it's come from Catholicism. And, and it comes from pagan Arabian religion, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, they, they, they will have used that. I think primarily, though, the Catholic so-called church just tried to use all the Arabs as a proxy army to get Jerusalem, and then they turned it into some sort of religion. Or yeah. a mixture of both, I don't know. I mean, they, they used to worship, uh, if you can call it that. I mean, they used to have 360... 360 idols inside that concrete block in Mecca. Yeah. So... Basically, what happened was is that the pagan Arabian Meccans, um, they had basically all these idols, and they had they had uh, gods for each day of the year. Yeah. And what Muhammad did was he basically uh, got rid of the other three hundred and fifty nine gods, but just kept one of them, Allah. And then that's, and then the reason why he was um, originally warmly received amongst the Arabs is because he basically was worshiping Allah, and they worshipped Allah too. So he yeah. they basically were still worshiping the same god. That crescent moon thing with the sun uh, in, in between the horns, that looks like something out of Egypt as well, John, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it, it definitely does. I mean, the, the moon, like, I don't think it's a coincidence that they have a tower with the moon facing on there because the Egyptians, and the, they had the same thing on their gods. Yeah. But then we should expect similarities between all the false religious groups. Yeah, exactly, because, you know, Satan is just simply repackaging things. Yeah, I mean, that Catholic monstrance, uh, what they put the uh, their cookie in. Yeah. It looks like a sunburst. That's from Mithraism. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it also, and it also how, the, like, the, how basically the Catholic Church is just simply the Roman Empire, but now a religious empire instead of political. And of course, yeah. you know, uh, Venus became, you know, the Virgin Mary. Jupiter became Saint Peter. Yeah. I mean, they they just repackaged paganism. Yeah, I mean, they've been brainwashing people into believing that Catholicism is uh, Christian, which it isn't. For the no, last absolutely not. Fifteen hundred years. It's yeah, just, exactly. Uh, they've repainted and decorated Rome, haven't they? That's all they've done. Yeah, I, I mean, all all, Catholic, all Catholicism is. I I tell you know, because atheists will say, well, you know, Christians kill. I did a video about how basically atheists have killed so many people via communism in the twentieth century, and they say, well, the Christians you killed people during the Middle Ages, and I tell yeah. them, no, that was actually the Catholics, and Catholicism is just pagan Greek and Roman religion repackaged. It's not yeah. Bible believing Christianity. Well, the Catholics love to blame the Christ Christians or. The Protestants, as they would call them these days, for everything. Yeah. Uh, people just don't have a proper grasp of history. I mean, I mean, I don't know everything about history, and you can't believe everything you read in the books, but if you know how evil Catholicism is, you know that they've been trying to destroy God's people, the Jews, the Christians, and they've made a massive amount of effort in trying to destroy the Bible, the King James Bible and its antecedents all the way from Antioch. Yeah, it, it, it really is ironic how the Catholics say, well, we gave you the Bible. Then why have they, why, <laughs> yeah. why, it's like, it's like, then why have they been trying to destroy it for the past couple hundred years and trying to, and why have they been burning people at the stake for reading it if they gave yeah. us the Bible? <laughs> it's <laughs> ironic. They want it both ways, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't going to listen to that diatrophies live stream. Uh, no, it wasn't a live stream video. I don't, I don't see the point of. I mean, I'm going to see the value of it in one way, I suppose. I'm not even 100% sure of that. But you see, when I got saved, all my sins were bought and paid for. I repented of as much sins as I can remember, and the Holy Spirit will bring them to remembrance. But I don't, see, I don't think that we necessarily need to make a big sort of... Well, I'm not saying he made a big display out of it, but I don't see that we need to put it out in the public forum for, for 
people to know because it's actually none of their business it's between the individual and jesus christ it's, it's between him and god yeah and, and based on the sins that diotrephes during like mentioned that i struggled with up until very recently uh he would if that if, if that was true then he was not qualified for ministry because he doesn't meet the qualifications if he's struggling with those those wicked sins yeah. because there's, there's qualifications for a minister and i mean he's al he's already too young anyway but um, yeah. he proved that he's not qualified for ministry so you know he really has no business teaching the word of god but um prideful people just won't can't see their own faults really no uh, i'm not sure i should repeat some of the stuff that i know he, i didn't actually listen to his video i have i had a quick scan of the transcript of which i've copied uh, it sounds like he's supposedly uh, I, I mean, if it's been repented of and all that stuff, you know, I don't know. I doubt it because I don't believe that diatrophies is safe. Me neither. But he, he said he mentioned bonds in more ways than one. So he's obviously, supposedly, an ex sodomite who was into bondage and all sorts of other pervy stuff. Yeah. Why, why does he need to tell anybody any of that? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's you know. You know. I mean, you could just say, hey, you struggle with sexual sins. You don't have to go into detail of, like, what you did. No. Uh, but if, we, if you were in a private discussion with somebody, I suppose it could be, you know, to be all right discussing it. But I don't, even then, I'm not sure to see the point. I mean, it, it's kind of like with the Catholics, how they go to the priest every week and basically tell all their dirty secrets to the priest, almost. It, yeah. it's, it's sort of like that. Well, it puts you in. Um, well, it puts you under their thumb, doesn't it? It de yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. It does answer another question, though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Why, why he gets so much? And I don't object to some a Christian brother getting support from other brothers. But I would be interested, sort of vaguely, in the motivation for doing so. And it did look a bit dodgy that ra they would rather overlook sound doctrine uh, in favour of, oh, he's sort of like one of us, so we're not going to say anything like, you know. Well, I've kind of noticed that, you know, I don't want to say anything that would get us kicked off YouTube, but all the, you know, people that had similar sins as he, he did, all kind of like they all flock together and kind of keep together and I've actually noticed that when one of them is rebuked then the other ones will run to that person's defense regardless of what of what wrong he did like when I, when I rebuked Hartley Aaron just got really mad at me because even though I had a scriptural basis to rebuke Hartley for lying about Tim Aaron just got offended because you know I was rebuking one of his friends and he's obviously a respecter of persons but I've noticed they all kind of just flock together I noticed yeah. So, what have you been busy doing today, John? Have you been getting ready for Crimbo? Uh, no, I've just been chilling out in my room. I was I was sick for the past couple of days, and it was a oh, mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you said you were ill, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Are you feeling better now, though? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely a lot better today. Right. But... Uh, Jeff, I don't know if, um, well, I don't know how to get in contact with Jeff, you see. Yeah, I think I, I lost his email, so I, I can't contact yeah. him. Right. So, I mean, I have, I, did, I haven't, I couldn't say I'd actually studied Islam. I'm aware of it. My view is, and I'm sure you'll agree, you study the whole, God's word, the Holy Scriptures, and anything that comes up against it, you're going to know that they're false. Yeah. There are very severe differences between the so-called God of Islam and the only true God of the Christian faith. Because their Allah is capricious. Yep. According to the Muslims, they don't know one way or the other what he's going to do. And yet with God... 
we do. God is unchangeable, he's, un he's immutable. His character remains consistent with scriptures, of course. Yeah. But the character, so-called, if you can call it that, of the of Allah, and he isn't the same as the only true God. Right? It is. It's just all over the place, basically. Yeah. I mean, I I think I showed this in in one of my videos, but really good proof that Allah is basically a pagan moon god from yeah, uh, Arabia yeah. is uh, let me just uh, I haven't used StreamYard in a while share screen so this just Google you could just go on Google and search up just uh, ancient Mesopotamian moon oh. god yeah and it's like all this stuff comes up and yeah. um, you got this thing right here oh yeah is, basically I showed this in my video you see yeah. like that little symbol there the the moon facing that direction well you got uh same thing on the mosque you have the moon facing that yeah. direction so it's like you know where are they getting it from they're getting it from uh pagan pre-islamic arabic religion yeah egypt babylon yeah mesopotamia uh, all that all stuff. over the place yeah because yeah. again yeah. satan he just simply repackages it that's all he does yeah uh allah has no son that's another uh there was two or three well, yeah, and I've 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 been studying Islam very recently, and yeah. not not only does the Quran say that Allah has no son, the Quran even curses those. It basically prays for Allah to basically curse those yeah. who believe Jesus is the Son of God. So. Yeah. Uh, what are you eating there, John? Oh, I was just getting my water bottle. Oh. I haven't had anything to eat today, don't you? I just had some chicken. Yeah. I love chicken. Oh, I do. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like to buy it in Tesco's. And you stick it in the microwave for 10 minutes. Because it's already been pre-cooked and, be, uh, like, crisped up on the outside. You know, brown skin. Yeah. But you stick it in the microwave for 10 minutes, it's done. It lasts for two days meals, some sandwiches, make a curry with it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know. Chicken. I love chicken. Chicken's yeah. my, my favorite. I also love turkey as well. I, I, turkey's pretty good. If it's cooked right, I think it can be really nice. Yeah. I'm not keen. It's on funny. Um, my cat, basically my cat, he likes chicken too. So whenever I have chicken, and if like wherever I am, like as soon as I open that that like package of chicken, he just runs down and just is standing right below me, just staring at me. He wants chicken too. It's, it's kind of funny yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. It's like wherever I am, he just swoops in out of nowhere and just is meowing and wants chicken. One time he like is like, jumping on my lap trying to grab the chicken. It's he wants it so badly. All right. He's actually in my room right beside me right now, just looking at me. Yeah. Oh. Uh... He fell asleep. Yeah. When you close your eyes while looking at him very slowly. Yeah, I do that. Oh, it's a way of telling him that you love you love him. Yeah, I, I I googled that and then you know I do that more often when I'm like just looking right at him. I'll have I'll slowly close my eyes and yeah. Uh, how far are you gonna go into looking into Islam? I mean, I, I have had a, a Quran once. Oh, well, I say it, have a borrowed one just to look up and make sure that I'd actually read what it says in there. They'll always come out with the excuse, oh, well, you need to learn Arabic. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the thing, though, is that if the Quran is the word of God, you know, shouldn't it be able to be in all languages if it's, like, the word of God? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so like, I've, I've been studying Islam and just looking at the pagan roots of Islam and, and yeah. how, how it really is nothing more than just simply pagan Arabic religion repackaged, really. And some of the stuff in it is actually quite stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they met, it messes up so many Bible stories. It, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's obviously somebody... Well, the Catholics have been messing about in there. Yeah. You know, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Well, like Muhammad, he was influenced by Augustinian monks, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. His wife was a Catholic. So, yeah. 
So Here, here's yeah. actually a funny funny verse in the Quran. It's uh uh basically it's in Quran chapter two, verse thirty four. Basically in this verse Allah commands that Adam you know, Adam and Eve that he commands that Allah or not Adam, he commands that Adam be worshipped, basically. In Quran oh. two thirty four. And then there's um I think it's Quran chapter twenty one verses eighty one to eighty two. It says basically that Solomon had devils that would dive in the sea and basically bring things up for him, and he basically had devils that were servants to him. King Solomon did. Yeah. Like, what's that? What? What's that thing about? Is it the devil lives in the nose or something? Well, yeah, there's like something about the devil living in the nose, and and this one I just mentioned previously. Basically, it says that Solomon had basically demons and devils that were servants to him and would literally dive in the sea and bring things to him. I mean, uh, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. How anybody, I mean, once you start believing something as evil as that particular book, as with other books, it just turns, well, it just turns you foolish, doesn't it? I think, or, or yeah. uh, fills you, I mean, the doctrines of demons, if you can call them doctrines. Yeah. So it must fill them and it must be having, they must have a, an evil spiritual influence over them. I mean, they just want to kill the Jews all the time. Yeah, it's it just, we've got, we got to kill the Christian. And, and that's why there have been years upon years of evangelism in Muslim countries, which have produced very, very little results because... They they are just told to view Christians as basically were we like we rejected Muhammad and and were basically heretics and apostates and and because the Quran refers to basically us and the Jews as basically quote people of the book meaning the basically gospel and the Torah, but because yeah. we rejected Muhammad that somehow makes us basically horrible people and we should all be killed and everything and and that's why it's, that's why years of evangelism in Muslim countries has produced very little results. Yeah, and. Um... They do say, and I know it's a lie because I followed it through. I used to study Hebrew and Greek. They try to say that uh, Muhammad is mentioned in the script in our Bible in the scriptures. He is. Oh yeah, they they mention that a lot. They they try to claim that like Deuteronomy eighteen or something like is a prophecy about yeah. Muhammad or something. It's it's pretty but ridiculous. It's with, I think it's to do with uh, what was it now? A lily of the valley or something? The name of a flower? Yeah, I don't know. But I, I've seen their arguments where they try to claim, uh, because uh, Islam does teach that basically the Torah and the Psalms and the Gospels were revealed by God. Uh, so that they try to claim that Muhammad was, was basically predicted in the Torah or something. It's yeah. I think it's, they, they say that Deuteronomy 18 has a prophecy about Muhammad. It's, you know, if you actually read the verse, it's not clearly not talking about Muhammad. Yeah. Have you got it on screen, John? Do you want yeah, to I, have, I, I have the... Uh, I see. I'm seeing it from your screen. I'll, I'll, I have the PDF copy of it as well. All right. Yeah, I've been reading it. There's some pretty crazy stuff in there. I mean, it's like yeah. for anyone to actually take this as the word of God, it's like, you know, there's definitely Matt, some definitely some spiritual deception there. Yeah. Do you want to get Deuteronomy 18 up, up John, and double check that? Or yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure it's Deuteronomy 18. I'm just not sure. I'll yeah. check it again. I, I, I know, I know, they, I know they do use a verse like in Deuteronomy to try to prove Muhammad or something. I think it's Deuteronomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Deuteronomy eighteen. That's the verse. For Deuteronomy eighteen, verse eighteen. That's the, the verse they try to use to say it's pro talking about Muhammad or something. Yeah. It, it the the verse it says um, it says I will raise uh, them up a prophet among their brethren. And like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all, and I shall command him. And as you see, he's talking about Muhammad, you know, which is totally not what the verse is saying. Well, isn't it peculiar that Jesus never actually mentioned him? Yeah. Exactly. That's the clue, really. Exactly. And it's kind of funny because it's actually funny because um, if, if you read two verses down, yeah. In verse 20, it says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that speak in the name of other gods, you know, Allah, even that prophet shall die. Kind of ironic, okay. two verses later, it's condemning false prophets. That's, that's uh, 18 verse 20, isn't it? Yeah, Deuteronomy 18 verse 20, just two verses after 
the verse 18 where they tried to say it's talking about Muhammad. Mm. So like the two verses later, it's basically talking about false prophets speaking in the name of other gods and basically doing things which God didn't command them to do. It's kind of ironic. It, it's almost condemning Muhammad a few verses later. Yeah. Uh, well, something else did occur to me about that. But, um, nobody swears in the name of Allah or curses in the name of Allah, do they? Yeah. I mean, it's always Jesus Christ or God or... It, it's actually funny too. Speaking of profanity, I've dealt with some Muslims, and believe me, they cuss. They can cuss up a storm when they're upset. Believe me, they, they yeah. use all kinds of profanity. Oh yeah. Yeah, they, they'll cuss up a storm. Yeah. Uh, what else was we going to say about that? Oh yeah, the fall. All the false religions, John, in one way or another. I mean, I always trot this out, but it is actually true, and I've seen it. They all try to detract in one way or another from what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross. Islam yeah. denies that Jesus actually died on the cross, and they say that Judas did. Yeah. You know. Exactly, yeah. And then, uh, and of course, like, they'll obviously deny Jesus Christ is God, which... Um, and it's kind yeah. of funny because I've shown I, show, I tried showing them some of them some verses where Jesus Christ is being worshipped and being called Lord, and they try to say, yeah. well, you know, the, the, like they always try to explain it away, or you know, I, I showed one of them a verse in the Gospel of John. I think it's because um, here's actually a good verse to use about, against them, because uh, they'll say, give me one verse where Jesus is called God. Well, here's your one verse, John chapter twenty, verse twenty-eight, and yeah. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. So he called yeah. Jesus Christ his Lord and his God. And and Muslims, they can't really answer that verse. John 20, verse 8, you say, John? It's uh, John 20, verse 28. Basically, Thomas, he basically worships Jesus and calls him his Lord and his God. Yes, he does, absolutely. And it's like you show that to Muslims, and they, they, either, they I find either they'll say that the verse was fabricated or that he was he was referring to somebody else or, or basically that the gospel of john in general is is fabricated that they always have to say it's fabricated or, or something like that and you'll get catholics saying he's still on there yeah exactly or you'll get mormons saying that they can become gods or is that the uh jehovah's witnesses deny his deity i think mormons I can't remember about Mormons. Yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, they also believe he didn't die on a cross, he just died on a stick or something. That's, that's what they believe. Yeah, I've had conversations with Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't yeah. think I've met any Mormons. I might have done. Here's Jeff, look. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not in like Mormon country. I'm, I'm, in fact, it's kind of funny because just literally just down the street from my house, there is all on the same street a witchcraft shop, two Freemasonry lodges, and two Roman Catholic churches just yeah. down the street from me, all on the same street. So it's like, we've, you know. We've got, well, I say we, I haven't. I mean, it's nothing to do with me, but there's a massive, uh, I think it's a Mormon so called temple in Chorley. Wow. Which is just, uh, it's massive. I mean, it's just. Uh, Oh, how far is it now, Charlie? It's not much more than a uh, 40-minute drive, maybe maybe an hour, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, like, I could, like, I, within walking distance, it'd be like a five-minute walk, and then there's two Freemasonry lodges, two Roman Catholic churches, and a witchcraft shop all in the same street. Yeah. It's insanity. I mean, if I had gospel tracts, I would go down there and give some to them, but, um, you know, because of COVID, the restrictions... It's, you know, it's hard to go out. Here's Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Bob. Hello. How are you? You know, you mate. How are you, brother? Good to see that you can come in. John, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good, buddy. Did you, did you watch um, Diotrophy's video, Jeff? I don't know, by uh, 10 minutes. Was that the hour-long one, Bob? The latest one that he's done, uh, what the Lord saved me from, apparently. I don't know which Lord he's on about, to be honest. No, I haven't watched it, no. Yeah. Oh. Basically, I, w I watched the whole video. Basically, 
he admits that until up until very recently, like September of this year, he's like been having perverted thoughts and, and talks about like struggling with sodomite thoughts or something like that. And, and, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, Get it off your chest, Bob. What are you going to say? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't want to be awful about him with it. it if he's struggling with that, I don't know whether... I, I honestly don't believe he is saved. If he is saved, it is one heck of a problem to have. I mean, I've met loads of... Uh, well, not loads. I mean, I did 30 years in jail. I've met quite a lot of people. Uh, I don't know even if it's a lot, really. One or two Christians I've met in prison, and they were, they are genuine Christians, had that similar problem. But I, I never got on the case over it. I don't see the point, Jeff, really, in making it all public. And it, it's between whoever and, and God, isn't it? You know what I mean? Hey there, Jeff. I'm listening, yeah. All right, it's between my personal sin life, it's between me and God. Um, I mean, to discuss it with someone privately, another brother, Christian, uh, if you trust them and all that. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I just don't. I mean, a cat will skin suit KJV did a, 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 a one-hour video on his past. I didn't despise him over it, you know, but I honestly didn't see the point or the necessity of doing that. The only fruit I could picture at all and even bring something like that up would be is, as a sort of a testimony to people that are into that sin. Yeah. But it's something just to share, like your dirty laundry with the whole world. I, don't know, I think that's a little weird. Yeah. Uh, I, I think my, my main issue with Aaron mostly is just the fact that he's like a young kid who's been saved for a couple of years and thinks he's qualified to teach the word of god i mean i i make videos but i don't actually teach the word of god i just i just talk about the bible i might do political stuff but it's like i i don't claim to i've never claimed to be in ministry i've never claimed to like run a ministry i just run a youtube channel i guess my issue is that a young kid like aaron and other young kids too just rising up and thinking they're qualified to teach the word of god when they're not that's my thing the other thing is, your past sins uh, are all done away with uh, as you progress through your, in, in your Christian walk. Obviously, you're going to sin, you're going to, you know, fall. Well, not fall, but you know what I mean. Uh, but you can repent, you can pick up, uh, pick yourself up and carry on in the Lord, trusting and asking the Lord for forgiveness repenting praying about it uh but as far as i'm concerned you know you don't go fishing and and neither do you start sort of well publicizing it because unbelievers are going to see that and i suppose in one way it might be of benefit to somebody or they'll talk to him or something i don't know the only benefit, like I said, Bob, would be, like, say, the sodomite community. If they see a former sodomite saying that because of the grace of God, they got out of that perversion, that filthy sin, yeah. and it's available to them too, that's the only small benefit I could see in yakking about it. Do they ever get come out of it, though? It, I mean, I think I mentioned it to John, that, that particular sin, because John has done some videos on the sin of sodomy and, and the, uh, oh, what do you call that? Baptist, uh, so-called Baptist bunch of people. It is, that is a, a really, oh, a difficult sin to deal with it as it's always going to be picking away at your, at your, Satan's always be gonna, going to be throwing temptation at you. Um, I think it's almost an addiction, 
in a sense, as well, spiritually. Is it one of those things that some you can get away from? People do get delivered from it and all that. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But I guess my, my main I contention <laughs> my main contention has always been just, you know, I don't, you know, think it's good these young kids are just rising up and, and thinking they're qualified to teach and that kind of stuff. I mean that's just that's my kind of main issue with the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well they're still growing up, John. It's like they're not even there yet there. Yeah. I How mean, are they gonna I, lead about grown men? You're yeah, exactly. I mean I, I make videos, but it's like I just do really short, small videos. Uh, it's like I don't preach the I don't preach sermons or teach the word of God. I just make videos talking about the Bible. It's like I don't understand where these young kids are coming from who have like have only been saved for like a year or two and they're like in their early twenties and just rising up and think thinking they're qualified to teach the word of God and thinking they can just call everyone lost. I mean, I don't understand where they all come from and where they get this mentality from. Yeah, patience really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh I, I would never, I don't know. Well, I, mean, I, I like the verse in Second Peter 3.18, it says, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. It's like a process of the verse even saying that you have to grow. It's not just going to be you're saved and then two months later you're leading the ministry. It just it doesn't happen. No. Yeah. I, I, and that's the thing is that I, I think a lot of these people they basically are just copying Brian and then I find the verse that Aaron tri- the verse that Aaron tried to use to basically justify him basically being a full time ministry at his age is I think it's um, I forget the verse it's I have to just write it down somewhere but I think it's where is it it's basically um, for Second Corinthians five eighteen here's the verse he tried to use it says. Uh, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath, hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And he tries to say, see, you know, we're all given the ministry of reconciliation. So he's basically trying to say that anyone, regardless of how old they are or how long they've been saved, can just, just get into full-time ministry, which I don't think that's all. That's at all what it's saying. Yeah, well, we are all given that ministry, but... If you'd asked Aaron Deering to honestly look and say, what fruit has he produced? Where are these souls, these people that come thanks to him? There's none. Yeah. And, and not to mention the fact that, you know, he just, I, I've seen him where he just doesn't seem to take correction on anything. He just, you know, I mean, the Bible would say he's like a novice being lifted up with pride. I mean, yeah. like he just, he won't take correction at all. He never does. Where does he get his holy eraser from? <laughs> and I've noticed that with all these young kids who just come out of the Brian group and just think they're qualified to teach, a lot of them just won't take correction at all. Like, if you try to correct them, they get really mad. I- I've noticed that with a lot of them. Be funny, verse. Well, like the verse 2 in 1 Timothy 3, 3, 6 says, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Even the Lord saying, doesn't want novices. Oh. Yeah. And, and, you know, refusing correction is obviously not, like there's several verses in the book of Proverbs that um, condemn, like just refusing to take correction, refusing reproof and that kind of stuff. I'll try to find some. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here here is Proverbs ten seventeen. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. Uh, hmm. Proverbs thirteen eighteen. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. In Proverbs fifteen thirty two, he that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. So it's like, you know. Refusing instruction is not right, especially if you're claiming to be in ministry. It's the wrong attitude. Yeah. To just have this thing of, I'm always right, and you're, and you know, if you try to correct me, you're lost, basically, or, or you're wicked if you try to correct me or something. It's like, it's not, not a biblical attitude. No. I think, John, personally, I think they kind of realize that, but if they were to admit it, they'd have to change. Yeah. 
And that's the key, isn't it? Admitting to your sin to God in prayer. I mean, you don't have to prove to God that you're a sinner. He already knows. He knows all of it. You know. But we have to admit these things in prayer. Asking God for forgiveness and, you know. Yeah. And, you know, picking yourself up in a sense and just sort of moving on. Yeah. I mean, I, I had falling out with, with Aaron before, but I kind yeah, of found... Yeah. I really could kind of find that he was just basically this yes man to Brian Dunlinger. And it's like that that one day I came out with the video, just lovingly tried to voice my disagreements with Brian, and Aaron just swoops in out of nowhere and is calling yeah. me lost for simply just disagreeing with Brian. So I don't I, think you could have been more polite in that video that you did that day, John, because I watched that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, I mean, that you know, John could have been a bit more sort of brutal there if he'd have wanted to, you know. Yeah. But... but it's like... It, Sorry. Oh, right, go ahead. Go on, John. Oh, I was just going to say, it, it, it is annoying, though, just these kids rising up and, and just, you know, oh, I'm in ministry now, and, you know, I'm going to now teach people who have, who basically, you know, it's like, they haven't been around the block. They haven't experienced life. So it's like, you know, what, you know, it's like, and yet they think they're going to teach somebody who basically has experienced life and lecture somebody who has experienced life and you know yeah i find john even in my five years of being saved like every few months i'm learning to grow in that grace and kind of have more of a heart for the lost and want to see them saved and understanding like the reality of things deeper and deeper mm -hmm. and it just doesn't happen right away yeah it doesn't happen within like a year or two basically yeah. <coughs> the and, problem and Sorry. I was, I was just going to say, um, you know, and, and my belief on when somebody should be getting into ministry is my belief has been that they shouldn't be getting into ministry until they're at least in their 30s because that's when Jesus got into ministry. So that, that's, that's my belief on that. Like I wouldn't ordain – if I was a pastor, I, I wouldn't ordain somebody unless they were at least in their 30s. That's the biblical way to do it. Christians are supposed to ordain other ones. Like, who ordained Brian? Yeah, yeah. Who ordained him? You know, and, and it's like Aaron. Who ordained Aaron? He just he, he just declared he just declared himself in ministry. You know, you, no, you can't do that. Hmm. Yeah. And, and also too, you know, um, oh, darn, just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Great. One of the problems that I think the unregenerate, the unsaved have, the difficulty that they would have in seeing the truth, is because there's so many things going on in the world, isn't there? There's a parable about that. And we have to pull away the thorns, the, uh, the veil a bit. Hmm. Uh, but with all the... There's so many conspiracy theories, there's a lot of pressure on people, it's Christmas coming up as well, you know. Uh, people losing their jobs. It always seems as though there's no hope, and yet there is more hope than we could ever imagine in Jesus Christ. Yep. Uh, but when they come to see the KJV movement, for want of a better description, and they have a look at what's going on between the uh, the, the the sort of Denlinger rights and everybody outside of the, uh, well, what do they call it now? Is it the Living Church of God they call it? They call themselves? And see all the arguments and the stuff, none of it helps. Yeah. And it's it's funny cuz you know people who leave, you know, leave because we've seen their like their true colors, but then they somehow try to pin it on us, oh, we're causing strife and contention when really they're the ones who cause the strife and we leave because amen, of it. Or John, I mean, amen, John. That's true. Yeah. That's the thing they're making God in the body of Christ. What's the word I'm looking for? Inclusive or something? 
where Thanks. he's exclusive. He's available for everyone. Yeah, that's right. And they, and they just keep chipping away at things like you can't use the word Christian now. It's dirty, and they just they're chipping away at everything. Yeah, and it's like and it's like everything's made into a salvation issue, which is you yeah. know why, which is why I've sometimes said that. You know, and this is exactly why Brian and his group get attacked so much for lord, for teaching lordship, salvation, and backloading works, because they make everything into a salvation issue. Like newly saved people may not even know about the whole tribulation thing or post trib, pre trib. Yeah, yeah, they won't do. And, and, and also, how basically they declare anyone lost who simply just breaks fellowship with Brian. I mean. So basically, in other words, the body of Christ is only those who follow Brian. It's like, you know, and, and then of course they love t taking that verse, uh, Second John, not Second John, First John two nineteen, totally out of context. Because read the context, it's about Antichrist. They try to make it out where it's talking about someone leaving a group of believers fellowshipping with each other, which you know, I guess like somehow that equates you leaving the body of Christ or whatever. It, it, you know, it's ridiculous. And yet, John, they'll deny First John four one through three. <laughs> yeah, they'll pick they'll pick the verses they like cherry pick like that one, take it out of context, and then ones that are in context they'll ignore because it doesn't yeah. fit their narrative. Exactly. Yeah, they're doing they're they're doing just what the Catholics do: rip verses out of context that, that fit your narrative. I have yet to hear any lost people ever confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't know the scripture anyway. But I've, I've certainly never heard what any uh, unbelievers uh, make that uh, confession of faith or uh, confess that uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Haven't heard that either. No. Well, except among saved people, but. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the thing. And, you know, I, I've mentioned this before, but. You know, it is ironic how, you know, they, they go so hard against the Catholics, yet, you know, they're behaving a lot like Catholics themselves. Hmm. You know, I mean, they're, they're becoming the very cult they hate, pretty much. Becoming the thing they hate, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe that, well, I do believe it, because I know that Justin typed it in, but he said, oh, we made it up. Wow. Wow. That's God's word we're talking about there. Oh, oh dear. When you did that video too, Bob, showing the description there on his channel, the gospel was excluded from it. Yeah. It had everything other than the gospel. I'm a sinner and this and that, but the gospel wasn't even there. No, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Oh, well. and, and it is sad because if you listen to Brian's sermons like early on before he got married, he was very calm, very meek. He had a lot of grace for people. Yeah. And he was very, very like nice and polite. Yeah. But now he's just bitter and self-righteous and prideful and just, just won't take correction on anything. And it, it is sad. I mean, compared to Brian from back then to the Brian now, it's night and day. I mean, it's like he's a completely different person now. I think I know why as well. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sound awful. But I'm going to say it anyway. His wife has had an influence on his ministry. I believe so too, to be honest, because um, he wasn't. I, because I, I don't want to like attack his wife, but no, it, I don't. It, it appears that nice woman. I, I think she's a very pretty young lady. I'm sure she's saved, but she shouldn't be involved in in the ministry that I believe God initially gave to Brian. And I, I noticed too also that ever since he got married, over time he began getting more and more kind of downward spiral, and I do believe his wife could be having an influence on him. I do believe that. Well, she's had him dress up and all that silliness. Yeah. Well. And, and, and now he's built up this little personality cult, or cult of personality, where people now have their own little channels to where they dress like him, they look like him, and they just mimic him in their, yeah. in their sermons, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think I mentioned something in in chat on Twitter. Uh, it is a personality cult. I think some of them are lacking in personality. I said something else as well, which I can't remember. Um, oh yeah, they're digging the hole deeper. 
you know, uh, as Brian goes on, he seems to be digging that pit deeper every time. Yeah. Um. I mean, when it, I mean, it, I I, I want to bring this up. It's only a minor point, really. But Brian had thirty nine thousand subscribers on YouTube. He does a video, and then he gets on BitChute. He started on BitChute. He, he announced that. I don't even think he's got two hundred and seventy subs uh, followers on there. Yeah. I, I've also noticed too how, because here's the thing though, is that, you know, I actually, I work during the week. I, I work like really hard what I do at my job. And it's like, I, I don't understand where Brian thinks he gets the authority to, to basically lecture people about working hard and not being lazy when, you know, yeah. he just takes money from the body of Christ. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't have like an actual, well, I mean, I guess you could say ministry is kind of a job, but the way he does it is not a job. He just takes money from people. Well, he doesn't even meet people, John. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't meet people. It's In actually funny because there was one time where I, was, I asked him, hey, can I message you on Skype? And he, he was hesitant. It's like, why? I mean, wh why, why is he as a minister so hard to contact? And Paul commands people to work. Like, where yeah. you're meant to work. Yeah. yeah. Paul was a tent maker and he sold tents. Yeah. So How did you get there, though? <laughs> to <everybody. laughs> yeah, oh, so, yeah, this thing of just taking money from the body of Christ and, you know, it, yeah. it's like mooching off the body of Christ. It, you know, it's not, it's not biblical. It's not biblical, you know. And I do believe it is biblical to support minister, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But, but, the, yeah. but like, the, way, the way he does it is not biblical at all. To be charitable is one thing to help out, but to just have your whole living supported by the body of Christ. That's not biblical. Making not, distribution to the saints, which he's not doing. Yeah, you know. and, and the thing is, when you donate to a ministry, the money goes to the ministry. For Brian, it's all for him personally. And Houses, you know, cars, trucks, everything. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, he he like rarely posts videos. So it's like, you know, and in the video, he's just, he's just calling you lost. And it's like, I actually made a meme one time, which uh, has Brian with money on, on his face. And it said, you know, send me all your money so I can make videos questioning your salvation. And literally a few days after I made that meme, he made a video saying why I get people to doubt their salvation. So it's like hmm. the meme came true. Wow. People, people are sending him money so he can question their salvation on videos. To me, though, at the end of the day, what it sounds like is people rather just trust Brian and hang on everywhere Brian says in the book rather than going to the author of the book, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, really. Brian's the go-between kind of. I've noticed that too. A lot of them are respecters of persons, but Brian, mm. because when someone attempts to rebuke Brian, they, they they take it as persecution, basically. Oh, you're persecuting Brian when you simply try to correct him or rebuke him. Yeah. And it's actually one of the signs of a cult too. One of the signs of a cult is is they take basically someone questioning the leader as persecution. That's right. Yeah. I, I mean, it's actually, it's actually scary because I wrote a blog post. It was from a website called Cult Education, and they basically list all the signs of a cult, of a dangerous cult, and pretty much Brian's group does almost everything on that list of, of, of the signs of a dangerous cult. It, it's actually crazy how they do pretty much almost everything on that list. Do you think any of them can read, John? I'm not trying to be awful or, or, or cruel. But I did have a look at the National Average Reading Age in the USA. It is it's grade eight or something. Can they read? I mean, it's not just about reading, comprehension, and are they really? Re I mean, they're just obviously relying on Brian's every word and perhaps not reading for them, for themselves. And Brian did mention that possibility that a lot of people just can't read properly. Yeah, well, definitely a lot of them are not checking back with the scriptures. They're just listening to Brian. That's definitely mm. true. Well, he does tell them to get a KJV, so there's no excuse there, really. Yeah. To be fair to Brian, you know, I mean, every time he says, get your KJV, as far as I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people just can't see, like, like, kind of the thing that started my whole distancing from Brian is, 
that thing with between him and Tim. That kind of because I actually oh, watched yeah. I actually yeah. watched Tim's side of the story, and Tim was clearly showing that Brian was the one who was an heir, and Brian was the one who was basically covering up sin. And when Brian came out with his video responding to Tim, Brian did not even go through Tim's whole video. He just ripped a little clip out of context and just hung on that. And you know his followers weren't even bothering to watch Tim's side of the story. And that kind of you know made me realize, yeah, you know they're they're respecters of persons. They're not willing to listen to anyone that goes against Brian and listen to their side of the story. You know, and what was the point of him looking at Tim's last name, going through uh, hereditary? What is it you call it? And now he's a Spaniard. You know, oh, he's a Spaniard. He, 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 he's not. I'll be right back. All right, John. Yeah, he's still there, Jeff. No. Uh, I still. Go on, Jeff. I was saying about the ancestry thing. They said that uh, website there, ancestry.com, is funded by the Mormon Church. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. It is. Yeah, they do. Yeah, Tim Spaniard. What a poor <laughs> argument. Aaron Deering with his uh, holy eraser, his holy rubber. Yeah, I noticed I uh, Aaron uploaded another video, but I didn't bother watch it, Bob. I just I don't care anymore. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I'm sick of hearing his name, really, to be honest. Uh, uh, it's all character building stuff. Who's not watching? If you want to come in and chat, you can do as long as you behave. I don't mind. How, how much time have we got left to spend with us, Jeff? Uh, maybe another 10 minutes, Bob. We've got a few things I have to take care of. All right. Oh, I thought you were going to work or something. No, I got off there last night, so that's why I haven't responded to you. All right. Yeah. Long day, 12 hours days. I just want to get home. I have supper and basically go to bed. And then go to bed, yeah, yeah. I don't have your email address. Would it be okay to have it, Jeff, in the private chat? If not, it's okay. No problem. Yeah, you got two, Bob. I'm trying to find my Gmail. I haven't I haven't bothered to email Justin because I think there's no point. No, is it are you still blocked here? I I have I haven't even checked. Uh, <laughs> Justin, if you're listening, wake up lad. You've got to see I mean I, I know that he's withdrawing his foot from evil, Jeff. I know that. Hmm. I don't I don't see why he can't just come out and say look this isn't right. I don't want anything to do with it. His faith is based on Jesus Christ, God's word, the King James Bible, not not what everybody else in the Denlinger crew says. You're either for the word of God or and Jesus Christ, or you're for nothing. You, you stand for nothing. Yeah. No. Something like that. I don't know. I mean, I'm not judging him. I've got no problem with, with him. Uh, I just can't understand. I mean, I know he's an intelligent guy. I just don't understand why he would... Especially with what Brian Downing has been saying lately. People forget the cruelty of God. Those families deserve to have the children abused. Yeah, that was pretty wicked what he said, saying they that deserved it. Sick. It was pretty wicked. I mean, no, no child should get abused regardless. Never. I mean, no. never yeah, never. It, it, like saying that was pretty wicked. Uh he really hates Stephen Anderson, though, doesn't he? Yeah, him saying that does show that he definitely has hatred in his heart. Yeah. For him to say something like that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Stephen Anderson is obviously a heretic. He's a false prophet. 
and yeah, the new IFB is a cult, obviously, but him saying that was pretty wicked. Yeah. It does show he's got hatred in his heart. I wonder what the reason for that is, though. I don't... Yeah. It's also funny, too, because when people were calling him out on it, he was saying, oh, I, I, was, I wasn't saying that. It's like, well, that's, that's what I heard, you know? That's what I read. I've got a screencast of the comments. Yeah, that's what I heard. It's like, it's like, it's like, it'd be like me saying, hey, you know, go hit that person. Oh, and you, you go do it. And it's like, well, I didn't say you go do that. It's like, yeah, you did. Yeah. Well. Actually, turn the verse of scripture, they're kind of. The writing's on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, it just shows kind of the duplicity of Brian. He says, he says something and then denies, oh, I didn't say that. You know? Where's the. Well, the writing is on the, on the wall. I would certainly hope that it doesn't end up with brown trousers. Yeah. Right. Matthew, here's Matthew 18, verses, uh, verse uh, 14. Here's here's a verse I, I use about this. Uh, Matthew 18, 14. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. No. So, it's not, yeah. not God's will that a child should perish. Very clear. Yeah. It's certainly not to be abused. Yeah. Um, I I, mean, I don't know what I expected when I heard him say that. But they were all giving it amen in the live chat, John. Yeah. Again, it shows, shows the personality call. They just won't question anything the guy says. Sort of like, it's like a flock of gulls, Bob. You know, you throw some french fries and they're all flocking. Yeah. 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 Excuse me. Go on, John. Sorry, I, I was just, I had to cough. That's all. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So what's that, uh, Bob? You were saying about the wind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the what, sorry? Remember you were saying about the wind? He was teaching about the wind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did that in his video. You know what wind is. And then he's going around with his hand. <laughs> me, 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 me. Uh, and, and, oh, so, oh, I mean, the way he just expressed himself on that video, there's no way... Even the crummiest of so-called pastors wouldn't be behaving like that. It was very childish of them to do that. Yeah, it was girly. Yeah. Again, what, this is why I said these young kids shouldn't be in ministry, because they, they behave like little children. What have they done to his head? I don't know what they... they they've... Oh, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. But yeah, to throw around trying. salvation like that, John, yeah. like in charge of it, you, you've got the Lamb's Book of Life in front of you, just in your desk drawer there, and you're there with your big, your, uh, big rubber. And, you know, dragging people, apparently, out of the hands of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was joking one time saying that maybe Aaron visits heaven and basically plucks this out of God's hand for committing the unpardonable sin of disagreeing with Brian, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that's what it amounts to, really. Yeah. We've, com we've committed the un unforgivable sin of, of disagreeing with Brian, you know, disagreeing with Pope Brian. So he's now visited heaven and plucked us out of God's hand. Yeah. I dread to think what Jesus would think of the whole matter. Yeah. Well, I've said before, I, I don't believe Aaron is saved, but Jesus is probably looking down and just shaking his head. Uh, I don't well, even the think thing, John, I... even from my own correspondence with Aaron like on Skype, Matt, he's always been doubting his salvation, saying, did I truly call enough, or was I broken enough, and all this stuff, and it's just like, Aaron, did you believe the gospel? Yeah. <laughs> 
it's like do you, it's like do you realize you're a sinner it's like and here's the thing though is I, I i don't believe you have to come to god as like this broken contrite wrecked person uh you just have to realize you're a sinner you can't save yourself because there there are examples in the bible of because they say i heard aaron he literally said that if a person is not weeping and crying they've not been saved well he there said, are examples in the bible all throughout the book of acts people who are not weeping and crying and still got saved so you know. How can you be truly contrite before you get saved? When you get saved and you realize what you've been saved from and the grace that's been extended and offered to you. Mm. Really and, and, and that's, yeah. the thing. that's the thing. Him saying, oh, was I weeping enough? Was I crying enough? See, he's putting it all back on himself. Was I doing this? Was I doing this enough? Was I doing this enough? He's putting it back on himself. Basically. Yeah. It, it works. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. backloading works. Yeah. Oh, you see, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is basically just backloading works because it's, it's it's basically saying I have to do this before God is basically going to allow me to be saved, or I, yeah. I have to do this before I'm qualified for salvation. Basically, that's that's it. Yeah, it is. It is. It basically works repackage. It, it's backloading works. Yeah. Because instead of Jesus Christ saved me, it's was I weeping enough? Was I crying enough? Was I yeah. contrite enough? Was I, you know, was I this? Was I that? It's I, I, it's, it's all about me. It's never about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's spot on that, John. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Anyways, brethren, I got to get going. I have a few things to do. How long will I be? I'll be, uh, Available another day there. We do another stream. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Oh yeah, I, I have to get going too. I have to, you know, run some errands. Oh. But... Okay. No excuses, John. You can't leave yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're okay, John. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you've got other things to do, John. Yeah. Even on my December holidays, I got you know stuff yeah. to do. Take God care, everyone. Thanks for coming in. Bye. -bye. All right. God bless you, brother. All right. Bye. Okay, John. All right, I'm closing the stream. I will finish with a few words. If you do listen to this stream right through to, to the end. Have a look into Jesus Christ. Get yourself a King James Bible. Read and believe what you're reading. You know, put all your uh, uh, preconceived ideas out the way. Read scriptures. Have a look. Oh, you know, Jesus Christ died and was buried and resurrected the third day. You can get saved. There's nothing stopping you except you. Salvation is on offer. It's free. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't force yourself to get saved. You, you essentially you need to believe Jesus Christ. You you can't expect to get saved if you think he's a liar. And you need to realise that you need to get saved. You need to you need Jesus Christ in your life because he's the only solution to anything on this on this earth. All that stuff that's going on with the COVID and people losing their jobs you've got to see through all that and see Jesus Christ with extended arms waiting calling upon you to believe him when I say calling upon you I mean you know God would have would draw all men unto him, unto Jesus Christ. There is no other name given under heaven whereby we might be saved. Acts 4.12, King James Version. Uh, not Version, King James Bible. I don't like using that word, Version. The King James Bible isn't a version of anything. It is God's Word. Um, as are its antecedents from Antioch up to the present day. You need Jesus Christ in your life. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Uh, oh, there's tons more stuff I could say. You've got nothing to bring to Jesus except yourself. And even that is not of your own doing, really. If you want truth, if you have a, some sort of desire for holiness, to live a, a righteous life, you can only, that can only happen through Jesus Christ. Once Jesus Christ is in you. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The whole of the Godhead bodily will dwell within you and show you the truth. But you've got to want the truth. Right, that's it. I don't see anybody else watching, so I'm closing. Um, I don't think I missed out on seeing anything, you know. Um, you know, you've got to face the fact that we're all going to die. And there is a hell awaiting those that do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That essentially call him a liar. You can't rely on your own good deeds, so-called good deeds. I'm just going to put a few of these up before I go. Check these verses out. I put a manuscript, uh, a PDF there to uh, Islam. I put this banner up before I go. Right, that's me. I'm gone. Bye.